Hello everyone and welcome to another Unity scripting tutorial. In this video I want to talk about object pooling. And uh, you use object pooling whenever you don't want to instantiate objects over and over again and then destroy them whenever you don't need them. And this, um, this allows you to avoid all the lag spikes associated with instantiation. So first let's have a setup uh, using instantiation and destroy and then uh, trans change that setup into a pool. So the first thing that we'll need to do is create a cube. Let's put it 0, 0, 0 and this will be our player that's going to be firing bullets. So now that we have our cube here we can create a firing script for it. So we'll call this one fire and then we will attach it to our cube. So the first thing that we need to do is to have a public game object and this will be our M bullet prefab. We don't need start for anything. And then we'll have it so that whenever we press space, we create a new bullet. Um, and so we'll have if input dot get key down, key code dot space. one bracket here so key code dot space we will just instantiate a new bullet prefab so instantiate m bullet prefab now that we have this set up we need to create our bullet so we'll have game object sphere zero 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 and then we will bring it out a little bit and then change it to 0 0.2 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 so now that we have our bullet right here, we need to create a bullet script for it. So create C sharp script bullet. And with that, we will attach it to our sphere. So let's change our spheres name to bullet and then open up our bullet script. So what our bullet will do is it will translate along the Z axis. And then after three seconds, it just destroys itself. So for that, we will need a, to keep track of how much time passed. So we'll have a float m death timer. And our death timer is going to be equal to 0.0f. And then we'll do a transform dot translate along vector 3 dot forward multiplied by time dot delta time multiplied by 10.0f. And then We'll increment our death timer, so time dot delta time, plus equals time dot delta time, and if the death timer is more than or equal to three, we just destroy the object. So if m death timer is more than or equal to three point zero f, destroy this dot game object. There we go, and this is a very simple setup, and uh, but the object pool should pretty much work for any setup that you want to have. So, uh, but for now, let's create our prefab. So let's pull it down here and then remove it. For our bullet prefab, we will just attach that here and then run it. So whenever we press space, we're firing a bullet and then after three seconds, it gets destroyed. So how can we transform this setup into a pool? For that, we will need two classes. The first one being our object pool class and the second one will be our pool item so a pool item will be attached to every uh, item that needs to be pulled so pool item and now we can create an empty game object called bullet pool and this will hold all our bold pulled bullets so we will attach an object pool script to it. And this can be anywhere because all our pulled items will be disabled as long as they're not being used. So let's open up our object pool script. And the first thing that we will need is to know which object we're pooling using this pool. So public game object m pooled object. And on a, another public, this will be, one will be an integer, which will be our pool size. This will start off being zero, so equals 10. Uh, 
it's going to start off being 10. So this equals 10. And the last member variable that we will need is the list of our pool, pooled object. So list pool item. And this one will be called mpool. Now in our start, we need to initialize this list. So mpool is going to be equal to a new pool item list. And then we'll have our game object temp for int i equals 0. i is less than mpool size. And then i plus plus. Temp is going to be equal to instantiate m pooled object and this should create um, whatever how may, however many objects that we give it in our pool size so and once we run the scene so if we go back here again and go to our bullet we have our pooled object here so we can attach the bullet to it in our bullet pool and then if we try to run it should make 10 bullets if we change this to like, let's say 20, it should make 20 bullets as soon as it's, as soon as the scene starts. So now we need a way to add these to our pool list and disable all these pulled items because they're not being used at the moment. For that, we will create a new function called, so public void add item. And this one will take a pool item called item. Okay, so the first thing that we'll need to do is say mpool dot add our item and then our items parent will be the pool. That way, if we want to collapse all the pooled items, we can in the hierarchy. So item dot transform dot parent is going to be equal to transform. And then item dot game object dot set active would be false, and this will disable uh, the game object. Now, our bullet right now is not does not have uh, an item pool attached to it. So if we go to our bullet, it just has a bullet script. So what we can do is make bullet inherit from our item pool, our pool item. So if we go back to the bullet.cs, we can inherit from pool item instead of mono behavior. And this should be fine for now. So now we can go back here and say that our, we can do add item temp.get component pool item. And this works because even though the bullet has a bullet script attached to it, since it inherits from pull item, it will still pull that bullet script from get component. Now that we have all this set up, we can um, we can go ahead and try to run it and see how it goes. So there we go. As you can see, they're all inside the pool. And then if I enable it, I have 20 in here and they're all disabled. So this seems to be working pretty well. Now, the next thing that I need to do is to um, have a way to instantiate these items. So for that, we will have it right here, public instantiate item. And this will be game object so that we can use it exactly the same as the instantiate function that we can use inside game object classes, but um, this way we will be using our pool instead. So we will take a vector three position, a quaternion rotation, and finally a transform parent. And this will be equal to null by default. So now that we have this, we can say that, so whenever we're instantiating an item, we need to check if our pool is empty or not. And this is the first thing that we're going to do. So if mpool.count is less than or equal to zero, debug.log that the pool is empty. Pool is empty. And then we'll return null. So if our pool is empty, we don't want to create, uh, we don't want to return anything. 
Now, if the pool is not empty, we need to get that, um, get that object and then remove it from our pool. So game object item is going to be equal to our pool at zero dot game object and then mpool dot remove at zero and then return item and there we go so what this will do is it will instantiate the item and then we will need to use these inside our item pool yeah uh, our pool item class so if we open up our pool item we need to create a few functions in here the first function will be we probably don't need start or update so we can erase those public virtual void in it and in it will take a vector 3 position a, ve a quaternion rotation and a transform parent now in here I'll do game object dot set active to true because once it's instantiated we want to just set it to true and then transform dot position is going to be equal to the position we're passing in transform dot rotation is going to be equal to the rotation and then transform dot parent is going to be equal to the parent and this will be it for initialize next one up is our return to pool so each pool item needs to know which pool it needs to return to for that we will have over here an object pool variable called mpool and we will put a setter for it so public object pool pool set and pool is going to be equal to the value so now that we have this set up we can go ahead and return it to the pool so public virtual void return to pool and we'll say that our mpool dot add item and it will be this so that should be it for uh, initializing and returning items to the pool the last thing we'll need to do is to have a reset because whenever a pooled item is destroyed its its variables are not reset because it was in the scene active at the time so uh, what we need to do is to have a function that we force the user to override every time they make a new pool item so for that we will have a protected abstract void called reset and since we have an abstract function we need to change our class to being abstract as well so public abstract class pool item now our bullet will be telling us that we need to uh, implement reset and for our reset the only thing that we need to reset is the death timer so instead of using start now we can uh, override reset and give it the death timer instead so protected override reset there we go and for our reset we'll say our m dot timer is going to be equal to 0.0 f now we don't need start in our bullet class anymore so now we just have reset instead so whatever you were gonna put in start you just put in reset instead now for our pool in init we need to reset whenever it's initialized so we'll just put reset right here and that should be it for our pool item class now if we go back to our object pool we need to use some of these functions that we just created so in here when we're creating the pool items we need to assign mpool so in here right underneath add item we'll say that our mpool at i dot pool is going to be equal to this so this should be it for this part now if we go down here whenever we're instantiating an item we need to call our 
pool at zero dot init. So mpool at zero dot init. And we'll pass it the position that we have, the rotation that we have, and the parent that we have. And this should be it for the setup. So now that we have everything here, uh, we can go ahead and test it out and see if it works or not. So our pool, our bullet over here, everything seems set up. So if we go back to Unity, we have our bullet pool here. So the only thing that we need to do is to go back to our firing script. So instead of using instantiate, we will just have a public object pool and bullet pool. And instead of instantiating now, we will have m bullet pool dot instantiate item, and we'll give it the position, rotation, and appearance. So the position will be our transform dot position, our rotation, let's say quaternion dot identity, and then the parent we can just set it to null. So since parent is null by default, we can just not pass in anything, and this will be passed in as null. So this will be our new instantiation, uh, our way, our new way to instantiate objects. And then in bullet, instead of destroying, all we need to do is just say return to pull. And this will be our new way to destroy objects. So now if I go to the cube, now it takes in a bullet a pool instead, so we can take our bullet pool and add it in here, and then run our scene. So now if we fire, as you can see, its parent becomes null, and then once it's destroyed, it returns back to the pool. So if I spam it, it leaves the pool, and then it returns back to the pool once it's destroyed. Um, you'll notice that sometimes it says pool is empty, so if you get these if you get these pool of is empty debug logs, you know that you don't have enough pooled items, so you can go back to your pool and instead of 20, let's say we put 30 instead, and then clear that and run it again. And then if I try to spam it, there we go. So we still have leftover objects in the pool, and uh, that's pretty much the rough setup of pooling objects in Unity. Um, I really hope that this video helped. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them below. Uh, otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.